What's up YouTube? Since I've been making some 40k vids, I wanted to talk about, well, Valerian and Alea for the Custodes. I want to cover some units that I think are actually underplayed. Um, units that get ragged out online, but as soon as you actually put them down on the tabletop, you can actually make some good plays happen with them. Now, these models are kind of important to me because these are what got me into Custodes. I just thought that it was a cool looking box. You know, the price was all right for a limited, uh, you know, hero box. I figured they looked good and I could do something with them. I just wanted to paint them at first, but then I decided to get a Custodes army, as you can tell from some of the boxes behind them. So I started looking at their stats and I started kind of understanding how Custodes work and I played a few games with them. And in the process of all that, I found all these threads talking about how Valeria and Alea are complete garbage and trash. They were the worst effing idea. Why were these characters made? Um, and pretty much here is the big argument. Some people are just mad that Valerian isn't just a crazy beat stick. I mean, he's, he's a shield captain. He does get some special rules, but nothing that effing crazy, right? And these models, they're 180 points together. The argument is you can get a shield captain for 120 points or something like that and kind of have the same thing going on. Um, and then w w why do you need her? She's not a custody. Her stats aren't that great. She doesn't even have a gun. The one thing she does do is give you protection against psychic. And I honestly think that is what this is for. Uh, and the reason I'm making this courting right now is because I just ran a game with her. And Alea, mine are called Carl and Svetlana, by the way. So that's what I'm going to call them because that's what I'm used to calling them on the tabletop. Pretty much the flavor text for mine is uh, <laughs> Valerian and Alea ran away with some renegade custodies that went crazy after the Emperor died because the Sisters of Battle are trying to kill Alea because, well, you know how girls get when one of them gets a boyfriend. The, the rest of them want to cut her head off, it seems. I don't know, something like that. Um, so I put a helmet on Valerian and I changed his name to Carl because he's incognito. And actually, I'm very happy with the model. He looks great. When I paint him, I'll, I'll actually showcase him. Uh, so the thing is, I just played a game with them and these two literally just won me the game. And also this wasn't the first time that Svetlana was useful. The last game I played as well, she served as an extra model that you can get for 60 points because it's hard for custodies to pick up. I mean, name one other model that you can get for 60 points that's its own model and can run off maybe get an objective for you, or just go kill off some stragglers that have some pretty powerful guns that you're actually worried about. She managed to do that for me in the last game, um, and I won as a result of her definitely helping. Although she didn't stand out that much in that game. But in this game, let me, t let me tell you guys what happened real quick and why I'm so happy with her. And then we'll talk about the other big problem, which I don't think is that big of a problem, is... This this team actually breaking Battleforged. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Here's what happened in the game today. It was me fighting some Harlequin and Eldar mix. They had Farseers there. They had Mortal Wounds. They had Smite up the ass. And it was just a Custodian's Nightmare. Uh, Smite hurts Custodies so bad. One of those gets through. Three Mortal Wounds. Whatever. Hey, there's 100 points gone. Right, so it's a big deal, and uh, the fight started. We met in the in the middle of the tabletop. It was my shield captain, and he had some Ventari with him, and that was it. Right, my Terminators and uh, Valerian and my guards were back. They were a turn away from getting up there, and my opponent, right on his turn. Before he even got to shoot or destroy anything, he unleashed the psychic phase and he got a good roll for his smite, or it wasn't smite, it was some kind of elder thing. He ended up doing d6 mortal wounds on a psychic roll of 10, okay, and he, 
I was telling him I'm going to challenge the psychic roll right as he rolled the d6 to see how many wounds it would be. He did roll a six. And we looked at it and I was like, I'll let you keep the roll. I know you were rolling for the damage for it. Um, like right as I was saying, I'm challenging this. So what it came down to is I was going to eat six mortal wounds. And that's terrible for custodies. If I did not beat uh, his psychic test. Remember, he rolled great on it. He rolled like a 10 or 11. It was empowered. And I was like, you know, I, I got to do this. It's all on the line. So I rolled and I actually matched his roll. But guess what? Because of Svetlana Alea being 18 inches away from his uh, psyker, he got a minus one to his roll. So effectively right there, Svetlana shut down a Farseer, blocked six mortal wounds to my Custodes force. Um, and then I used my shield captain. I spent a CP to have him deny uh, the other Farseer or the other Psyker that was trying to smite. Again, I tied his roll. But because he was getting a minus one from Aaliyah being 18 inches away, I was able to shut down that other smite too. So because of Aaliyah, um, I managed to shut down seven to nine mortal wounds. Because a six was already rolled and the other one would have been a D3. So seven to nine mortal wounds to a custodies force. Let me tell you what that would have done. That would have wiped everybody out that was standing next to my shield captain. And then my friend would have had the whole turn shooting and assault with like half of his army to gang up on my shield captain. And my shield captain would have died. Uh, so the fact that she managed to negate all of these mortal wounds... Now my shield captain actually had a chance to survive and get back to the main force with my terminators and all of that. Um, so I can honestly say that these two just won me the last game. Just, you know, because they managed to block psychic powers. Um, and I honestly think that is what the Sisters of Silence, Sisters of Battle role is with the custodies is to help them shut down some psychic because mortal wounds are just so effing deadly to custodies. Uh, I also think that they help screen. One of the custodians' biggest weaknesses is their low model count. You know, having a unit of sisters here or there gives you something to get more bodies, more boots on the ground, and screen your territory out so it's harder for deep strike rules to get used against you for your enemy just to teleport right next to you because they have to be like nine inches away. So the more uh, bodies you can get on the ground, the more you can spread them out, uh, the more you box your opponent into having to land in certain areas of the map where you can be ready for them. Um, and that's kind of like what I see this girl doing and giving you... Um, She's giving you some psychic defense, which they really, really need, okay? And like I said, it's not bad to have her be able to go kill off some stragglers. She's not that bad in close quarters combat. Her sword's going to hit with, like, strength four. She does get a decent amount of attack. She's got five wounds. So um, it's much better than making your shield captain go after some stragglers to finish them off. I mean, we were playing meat grinder, so we were just trying to kill each other outright. Um... In the, in the one game that I had, I had to use Unleash the Lions so I could tie up multiple units. And that is what won me the game. But Svetlana helped there too because she managed to run off and take care of some hard-hitting stragglers that, um, you know, nobody else had to do. So uh, I honestly think they're worth it. I, I run them and I enjoy them, especially after seeing what they what she just did to shut down psychics and how many wounds she saved me right in that critical time, right? Because anybody running psychic, psychers against custodies, you know you, you only have a small sweet spot to get your smites in because after that, a good custodian player is going to get through and they're going to start taking your psychers apart. They're going to start targeting them. Um, and if you can do seven to nine mortal wounds right off rip and wipe out my first wave, um, the, the game pretty much would have been over because what my opponent would have done is just baited my terminators that move slowly 
he would have outmoved them, he would have shot at them, and he would have just kept that far seer just far enough away where I couldn't reach him, but he could keep smiting me. So I know these two just won me the last game. Um, I'm very happy with them. So that's why I want to make a recording of them because they're not that bad. Once you actually put them on the tabletop and actually try playing with them. Now, here's the big objective ob objection I know I'm going to get. These... Heroes break Battleforge rules. They're effectively going to drop your 4-up involve to a 5-up involve for custodians because you're not going to be a Battleforge army anymore. Honestly, I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, Talons of the Emperor, they've made it pretty clear. They've dropped a lot of hints that uh, the custodians were the Emperor's right hand. The Sisters of Battle, whatever, were his left hand. They're supposed to be ran together eventually, I think. That's the only way custodians are going to keep up with i mean look at some of the new armies that they're dropping right now how powerful the orcs are uh oh we're overheating not just the orcs um what ad mech you know getting to drop 150 attacks that do mortal wounds on sixes so i think in the future they're going to just make something where um they're going to update some rules i think and i don't think Running these characters are going to mess up your your army's battle forged. Um, so hopefully they'll get that all <clears throat> straightened out. But in a lot of the lore, I see them talking about that, um, and I don't think that's going to be the case. So I do think that you will be able to run these units in a custodian force and still have it be battle forged. Um, a lot of the complaints I was seeing about that were like a year old. So I don't know if they've done anything about that now. But, hey, uh, if anybody has any insight on these characters or maybe I'm not seeing something about it or maybe I'm playing them wrong, please leave me a comment. Let me know. But I honestly think these guys are getting a bad rep. And I'm going to be covering some units that I think are getting a bad rep um, that I've actually played and have done awesome with. So more of that to come and not just for the custodians either. I also have a very good Necron force and I want to cover a couple of different things there. So, uh, I'll also be doing some vids on conversions and making custodians because guess what? I'm not buying custodian guardians. I'm buying intercessors that are, that have awesome legs. They look like they're charging. I'm giving them swords and shields and, um, you know, those are going to be my custodian guards. The only box of guards that I'm buying, I'm going to be converting into the, what are they called? The Aquilius, the, uh, asparagus no no <laughs> god damn it what are they called uh they're pretty much you know the ones with the super heavy bolters with the laser on them uh yeah um as far as any custodian guards i'm running though i'm going to be converting them from indominus box set uh space marines so wish me luck they're turning out great already and i'm very happy with them which is why i decided to build a custodian army to do something with the space marine heroes that i actually have so I'll, I'll show you how that turned out because it's turning out very well i can order any primaris that i want and i can convert them easily especially if you have some terminator shoulder pads they will actually fit over space marine shoulder pads which makes conversions for custodies super easy all you need is some heads some arms the weapons and some shoulder pads and just about any space marine will look like a crazy badass custody guard especially if you give them a shield and uh the weapon so i hope you enjoyed talk to y'all soon